Hello everyone, this is Squirk, a level 65 necromancer on Agnar. So this is my little series of videos with different tips and tricks for playing the necro class. And if you saw my last video, which was about how to charm as a level 65 necro, this video is going to cover another key technique, which is fear kiting. Now many of you have um, may have done this before when you're level 10, you will have feared a puma in common lands and then chased it around with the rusty dagger in your pet. It's actually still a pretty useful technique at level 65. So the mob we're going to be doing this on today is Lodizol here, who is very magic resistant. He summons, he hits pretty hard, and in general will be a very difficult mob for a necromancer to tank. So to start it off, we are going to pull him with Scent of Terrace, which he's resisted, and debuffs his Poison, Disease, and uh, Magic Resist, which will be useful later to Lander Dots. So, this spell does not have a damage component, so you can just cast it. He won't start summoning. Now, as a next step, we're going to be snaring him. Hopefully. He is very Magic Resistant, so the snare may... There we go. He's been snared. And we have equipped this Orb of Tishan, again, from the last video, which is a, a one-hand blood that box Tashania, which is the level 60, uh, sorry, level 41 Enchanter Magic Resist debuff. So as you can see, he's just resisted fear. It's okay, we just need to get one fear on him first. So we have an opportunity to proc our Magic Resist debuff. Let's see if this one lands. Oops, I didn't completely stop running before I cast it. Let's try that again. Okay, he's been feared. So, we're not going to worry yet about uh, damaging him. Our first main objective is simply to proc to Shania, because that will make all of our future fears much easier to land. Okay, he has resisted fear again, because I did not get my proc, and as you can see, he's in summoning mode now, so I'll be getting summoned basically every tick. So I'm just, even though he summons, you still want to kind of run out of range of him, so he's not bullying you the full time. Okay, he's feared again. And because his magic resist is so low, uh, there we go. We've just procced Tishania, which is going to help tremendously. So because his magic resist is so, uh, was so high, he was uh, resisting most of these fears, and even when we did land it, it wasn't lasting very long. So I'm just trying to stay out of trouble at the moment until I get a good solid fear. Alright, let's get this. Okay, so now fear is on. He's snared for another uh, one minute. And it's time to start piling on our dots. Okay, fear is off. He's resisted. So I think the next thing we're going to be doing, besides kind of carrying on this pattern of hopefully fearing him, this is actually an unusually high number of resists we're getting. We're using level 63, sorry, 62 uh, Unholy Bellow. Between my cast of doubts, I'm going to start proccing a Will Sapper on him. Which is already actually proccing within a few seconds. 
And what this allows me to do is to slow a non-undead mob. It's one of the only items in the game that allows a necromancer to slow a non-undead. And as you can see here, my snare wore off. So that's kind of urgent to reapply. All right, there we go. Sorry, I was saying that uh, a will sapper is one of the only ways a necro can slow a non-undead mob uh, through a block. It is an excruciatingly difficult, not difficult, but long camp in Dragon Acropolis, but it is worth every uh, every moment you spend camping it. Okay, he's feared again. It's probably time to tap him a couple of times. Uh, in terms of my pet, I'm using a level 63 rogue, so he'll be backstabbing Lodizol as he chases him around. Still have... Oh, just refresh snare now. So the reason that I wanted to have a slow energy sap on him is because when, he, when fear breaks, he will instantly summon you. And it will just take the sting off his attacks until you get a new fear on. Like now he's resisted my fear. And he's not going to, you know, he's not going to beat my ass. He resisted again. And as soon as he summons me, I'll start my cast here. There we go. And as soon as he summons me again, I will cast my next fear. Okay, that's good. Fears off, waiting for summon. There is a summon, fear on. Checking my slow. I should refresh it, I have 30 seconds left. Yeah, this guy has a lot of hit points, and he has mitigation of the mighty, uh, at least on the progression server, so it'll take you a while to kill him, but if you were face tanking it, it's a very marginal fight. You would need to be extremely well geared to pull it off, and even then, you're kind of relying on a quick proc of a slow, or there's a lot of variables. It's not a very reliable way to kill him. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention, lost my fear. Let's wait till he summons me and then fear him again. There we go. And as you can see, Lodi Zola is in big trouble now. Uh, Fear is actually off, but he's now in low health fleeing mode, so this fight is... The day is won. Uh, in terms of buffs, we didn't have any. Well, I mean, we had our self buffs, so I had shield of Maylin and you know, the usual stuff. Let's see what he dropped. So he dropped uh, two pairs of these Lodizol shell boots. And uh, that's it. So he does drop a nice uh, melee belt. But anyways, this video is not about loot. It's about the technique. 
Um, so as a level 65 Necro, there's various situations, Lordy is a great example, where Fear is still very useful, and it allows you to kill mobs that would be very borderline to kill if you were face tanking them. Um, as you can saw, the fight took a while, but he went down with relative ease, especially once we propped our Tash on him. Anyways, hope that helps, hope you learned something, and uh, have fun playing your Necros. Bye-bye.